Hey, hey, it's Beata and Sarah from Be English Coaching and welcome to today's lesson. We are talking about Guy Fawkes and fireworks and we both love fireworks. So yeah. this should be exciting, yeah. fun, entertaining. We do have some interesting and surprising facts for you about Guy Fawkes and about the whole thing. And also you will have a chance to practice your pronunciation and expression. You can read after Sarah some of the things she will have to say about uh, this special festival. Who was Guy Fawkes? And um, I think people always use slogan when we talk about the 5th of November. Yep, child, we used to chant it. Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Mm -hmm. So we commemorate it every 5th of November. Mm -hmm. It's always the 5th of November. Yeah. However, compared to the 4th of July in America, mm. you don't always celebrate this on the 5th of November, do you? No, firework displays can go on for at least a week. Because mm -hmm. everyone chooses a different day, which is convenient to them. Mm -hmm. But we call it the 5th of November then. You know. Yes, but it's not a public holiday, so no. people just just choose the Friday or Saturday nearest yeah. to the 5th of November. If it's on a Wednesday, you might pick the weekend after or the weekend before. You know? mm -hmm. uh, why do people celebrate the 5th of November? What is it all about? Who was Guy Fawkes? It's all about a conspiracy to blow up the Houses of Parliament and King James, who was in the Houses of Parliament at the time, in a, an attempt to rid the country of a Protestant government. Mm -hmm. But now I don't think people think about the history much. No. They just forget it and just enjoy the celebrations. Yes, it's just a fun evening of um, hot dogs and so on. And, and bonfires yes, and, and fireworks. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. fantastic fireworks. Mm -hmm. There is another thing that uh, if you are in England that you can see if you join these celebrations and it's the dummies and yeah. the effigies called guys mm -hmm. could you please tell us something about these um that some years ago not so much now children used to dress up a dummy and put it in a push chair or pram or something and push it around and ask for a penny for the guy with a little sign up saying a penny for the guy and it was a way for children to get money I wasn't entirely sure what they did with the money, maybe bought fireworks. I don't know, but a penny for the guy. The guy is the guy on top of the bonfire. Mm -hmm. And you said it was more back in your... Yeah, it seems to have died out recently. Mm -hmm. I think all these things kind of died yeah, out. Yeah, I think um, uh, the Halloween tree, trick or treat sort of mm -hmm. rather got rid of that little mm -hmm. tradition. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest celebrations happen in Louis. Yes, which is a village down in Sussex. Yes, and Sarah lived there for how many years? A couple of years. And so did I. Why Lewis? You know, why is Lewis special? Why is it connected Lewis, to Lewis, I think, started the, the business having a pr massive procession through the town. Roll barrels down the high street, it's on a hill, which represent the gunpowder barrels in the Houses of Parliament. And it started because Queen Mary Tudor was a Catholic and um, burnt Protestants at the stake as they call it and there is a memorial in Lewis to the Protestant martyrs so it started there as an anti-Catholic sort of thing but now it's just a load of fun there are various companies in the town who compete against each other to be the best costume the best whatever and it's taken very seriously and it is amazing unfortunately nowadays it's got a little bit touristy but it is a a hell of an evening. Mm -hmm. Massive yes, bonfire. So if you right on the cliffs, it's brilliant. If you happen to be near Louis, or if you don't mind yeah. traveling, it's something hundred yeah. percent. Just go, just go and watch it. And some um, of your students went one year. I remember talking to them about it. Oh really? Did yeah. they? Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. Because we told them and they went. Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Louis, you should definitely go and watch. And there is something that they do with the dummy, uh, with the effigies. So what do they do? You know, this is, is all the costumes they wear. Yeah. But also, you know, they kind of burn the... They burn an <laughs> effigy of someone they don't like. Mm. It, I think way back when this all started, it was probably 
uh, the Pope or someone. Uh, but nowadays it's an unpopular politician. I'm sure Boris will be on a lot of... <laughs> or they pick, I don't know, but someone they don't like. Yes, I know Gordon Brown was there. I don't know why, whether they got permission from Downing Street. It says um, I don't think they got. I don't think they wait for permission. I think they just do it. I don't think they would get the permission. No. <laughs> we don't no, know. No, do they, don't, do, no, it doesn't matter. But they they just burn these kind of effigies of famous politicians yeah. or, or political figures or people they don't like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we now have six shocking or interesting facts about Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. The traditional death for traitors in the 17th century England was to be hanged, drawn and quartered in public. But despite his role in the gunpowder plot, which the perpetrators hoped would kill King James and as many members of Parliament as possible, it was not to be Fawkes' fate. One theory is, one, is that he awaited his appalling punishment on the gallows and leapt to his death to avoid the horrors of what was to come having his genitals cut off, his stomach and opened, and his intestines pulled out. By jumping from the gallows, he died from a broken neck, thus avoiding the full agony of the execution. That is one theory. Presumably, the theory that he was hanged, drawn and quartered still persists. Yes, I was so going to I ask, so uh, people who don't know about this punishment, could you please okay. explain? Based in, in Treason was a crime that was only committed against the state, i.e. a spy, or someone who wanted to murder the one of the monarchy. Mm -hmm. It was definitely against the establishment. Mm -hmm. And the worst possible punishment, which is pretty awful, was to be... What they, brutal! Yeah, brutal, it's actually appalling. Hanged, drawn and quartered in public. In fact, the order of that is to be drawn... They were dragged through the streets, literally dragged, possibly on a litter behind a horse, mm. which was to degrade them so that the crowds would throw things at them and uh, insult them and so on. Then on the gallows, they would be partly hanged mm. so that they were still alive, cut down, and then they were cut open and their insides were taken. Yeah, I I'd never heard the theory that he jumped off the gallows and died of a broken neck, but there are loads of myths and stories about this. I don't know. I mm -hmm. don't know. What I don't understand is if he was hanged, drawn and quartered, or even if he died of a broken neck, why do we put him on a bon on a bonfire? Yes, do you know? If, if, if that's what Sarah just said, we do have a question. So yeah, does yes. anyone know yeah. why? If he was hanged, drawn and quartered... quartered. Yeah, why, we, why do we put him on a bonfire? I get the fireworks, because that would have been the explosion, had it happened. Mm. And the House of Parliament going up with lots of bangs and whistles and so on, but... Mm -hmm. I suppose, I don't know why we stick him on a bonfire, but it's fun. Yeah, so we need your help. Could you please let us know <laughs> yes, what you someone think? find out. <laughs> well, fact number two. As we said, Guy Fawkes was not the only one. No. And he was actually not the ringleader either. There were a total of 13 conspirators in the gunpowder plot, which was masterminded by Robert Catesby, who was a charismatic Catholic man who was known to the authorities as a troublemaker because he was... He spoke out against the English crown quite often. But it was Guy Fawkes who became famous because it was he who was caught red-handed with 36 barrels of gunpowder. And for two days, he was the only conspirator the King's men had captured. And he was tortured appallingly until he gave up the other conspirators' names. Mm -hmm. Shame. Yes. So, And I know Sarah has this picture in her head every time you ask. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and so she has to tell Sitting us. in the dark in the cellar with... Surrounded by barrels of gunpowder and a match in his hand. Yes, so if you ask why was Guy Fawkes the unfortunate man, yes. <laughs> this is the answer. He was the idiot who stayed there. <laughs> Everybody else ran away and he stayed there. <laughs> There's always one, as they say. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the way I see it anyway. <laughs> Bug number three. <sighs> Guy Fawkes was not Catholic by birth. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is all about religion, and religion has always played uh, its part in, in wars. Still, to this day. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Despite becoming the greatest enemy of the Protest Protestant government, Guy Fawkes was, in fact, brought up as a Protestant. However, his maternal grandparents were Catholics who refused to attend Protestant services. In 1578, when Fawkes was eight, his father died and his widowed mother married a Catholic man. Hence, the mother's side of the family was definitely Catholic, and he then converted to Catholicism 
when he was a teenager. But we have another question. Course, you are not in all the, the others you need said, to, you need to come it, the others all said, let's go now, you light that and we'll run. Yeah. So he lit it. Yes. And he was, <laughs> didn't run fast enough, crap. Okay, right. <laughs> Okay. Number four, it's all about his name. Mm. So he wasn't actually called Guy Fawkes. Age 21 and a committed Catholic, mm -hmm. Fawkes sold the estate his father had left him and went to Europe to fight for Catholic Spain. While he was abroad, he adopted the Italian variant of his name, becoming known as Guido. This was thought to be an attempt to sound more serious about his Catholic faith. When he was caught by the king's men, at first he claimed his name was John Johnson. However, he finally, finally signed a confession as Guido Fawkes after days of extreme torture. So he's, we could call it Guido Fawkes Night. That sounds no, like it. Yeah. I don't think we can call no, okay, Guido's all the guys. Let's guy. stick to guy. <laughs> okay, Fact number five, and it's about it's tradition. tradition, that the Houses of Parliament are still searched once a year for conspirators. Apparently, yes. Whether they do this on November the 4th or not, mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but before the state opening of Parliament, they still search the Houses of Parliament with lanterns to make sure there are no conspirators hiding in the cellars. This has become more of a tradition than a serious anti-terrorist precaution. Who is it searched by? Oh, the Yeoman of the Guard, who are the traditional um, soldiers of a sort that you see in, at the Tower of London. And... The yeoman is an old word for a, uh, a branch of the army where they carry pike staffs, which they still do. And of the guard, it's of the guard of the monarch. Yes. And uh, the last one, so fact number six, it's about the cellar. Mm. So the cellar that Guy Fawkes was found in no longer exists. And Sarah will also tell you one interesting bit about the history, how they actually got this cellar yeah how they were able to 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 hide in the cellar and get 36 barrels mm. underneath the houses mm -hmm. of parliament mm -hmm. what it is one of the conspirators was a chap called henry percy and the percy name is of a very very old and very distinguished aristocratic family in england and i think henry percy's father who was the earl of something um owned the cellar in some way and so they rented it from Henry Percy's father, which gave them access. Okay. Right. So, um, we hope that you have learned something about Guy Fawkes and about the gunpowder plot. And then if you, if you talk about it, or if you join in the celebrations, you will also understand a bit, you know, why it's happening and yeah. why people are celebrating it. Yeah. One of yet another rather bizarre English tradition. That it's not bizarre. It's about killing people. But it was. <laughs> but now the... <laughs> Now what we get to experience yes. is the... Now we just enjoy it. Exactly. If you've enjoyed it, if you've learned something new, please like it, share it and uh, subscribe to our channel. And we have a very interesting quote at the end of this lesson, which we think fits Absolutely. with the, what we've discussed and what we've talked about. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, mm -hmm. which is as true in the 16th century as it is in the 21st. Mm -hmm. If you go to watch a fireworks display, enjoy it, stay safe. We mm. are going. Yes. Yes, we, Ooh, we both yes, love it. There is something so special about fireworks. Why do you like fireworks? I like the bangs and the crashes and the pretty lights of the sky. Yeah. Yes, there's something magical about them, isn't it? Absolutely. The main thing is that we get to see these amazing fireworks. November is always a bit dark, dark and gloomy yeah. and, and the weather can be a bit uh, depressing. But there is something to look forward to. So remember, remember the 5th of November. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.